Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. We made it here to E3 2017 in Los Angeles, thanks in a large part to our partners at the VFS School of Game Design. Thank you, Vancouver Film School. Now this rundown is dedicated to our buddy, Bear Safi, who uh, did a great job streaming with me all weekend long and is now diligently cutting this rundown. Thank you, Bear. This rundown is all yours. <laughs> Nintendo had the last big presentation here at E3 2017, but it certainly wasn't the least. With all the cool games they announced, where do we begin? I guess the best place is Metroid Prime 4. Nintendo announced a surprise new fourth entry in the first-person Metroid series, making this the first one since Metroid Prime 3 was released on the Wii almost 10 years ago. No release window or developer have been announced yet, but we'll try to get more out of Nintendo later today on the show floor. Another new game, Metroid Samus Returns, is coming to Nintendo's other platform, the 3DS, later this year. Let's just hope it's better than the last one, Federation Force. Samus Aran isn't the only Nintendo icon getting her own game. The long-rumored Pokemon RPG was finally officially announced for the Nintendo Switch, making this the first core Pokemon game released on a console ever. This is going to be a huge game for the system and the franchise, but unfortunately we won't be playing it for a while because Nintendo says it won't be out for at least a year. A Switch game we will be playing this year is Super Mario Odyssey because Nintendo announced that it arrives October 27th. This makes it Nintendo's big holiday title. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is also slated to arrive on the Switch this holiday season, although Nintendo hasn't provided a precise release date yet. It's a sequel to the original Wii Xenoblade Chronicles game and not the more recent spin-off Xenoblade Chronicles X, which was released on the Wii U in 2015. The first footage from the first DLC for Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was unveiled. It will give players new challenges and items and arrives June 30th. A second and much bigger add-on called Champion's Ballad will expand the story this holiday season. New amiibo figures for the game will hit stores around the same time. Looking ahead to 2018, Nintendo announced that they're working on a new Kirby game, which will gobble up the system next year. No title yet for that, and Nintendo also didn't announce a title for a new Yoshi game they announced for the Switch. This will be the character's first big console game in years, and like the recent 3DS entries, it uses a very cutesy art style. Finally, Nintendo and developer Psyonix confirmed rumors that the hit car soccer game Rocket League is coming to the Switch, making this the first handheld platform to run the game. This goes a long way towards establishing the credibility of the Switch with the eSports crowd. The Switch version naturally comes with new Mario and Luigi themed cars and items. It arrives this holiday season. I think it's safe to say that Nintendo won E3 2017. If it's not a battle, where's the fun? Sony had their big presentation last night, but it wasn't anywhere near as big as last year's. Probably the biggest and most surprising thing unveiled by Sony at E3 this year was Monster Hunter World, a beautiful new game that sees the franchise return to the PS4 for the first time in years. It's also coming to the Xbox One and will arrive in early 2018. Our editor, Bear Safi, is stoked. Oh my Monster god, Hunter they World. got Monster Hunter! So what is this, an god online? Damn it, that's crazy. Online game? Next up, Sony gave us another look at the new God of War game, showing Kratos in action alongside his son. That also arrives in early 2018. If you need more giant monsters in your life, Sony announced a remastered version of their PS2 game, Shadow of the Colossus. Given that it's already been remastered for the PS3, this doesn't have us that excited. It arrives in 2018. Are you seeing a pattern here? Almost all of the big games Sony showed off are coming next year, leaving a big first-party hole in the PS4's lineup for this holiday season. To make up for it, they're releasing new DLC for Horizon Zero Dawn called The Frozen Wilds, along with the standalone Uncharted expansion, The Lost Legacy, which arrives in August. It's too bad we're not getting a full first-party game, though. As for the PlayStation VR headset, that has loads of new games coming. Until Dawn developer Supermassive Games unveiled two new titles, a psychological thriller called The Inpatient and a military shooter called Bravo Team. Star Child is a new PSVR adventure from the developers of the Oculus Rift game Lucky's Tale, and Bethesda is re-releasing The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim again in a new VR version on the headset. For you animal lovers, there's a very cool looking game called Moss where you play as a cute little mouse 
Lastly, for the PSVR, Final Fantasy XV is getting a spin-off called Monster of the Deep, which is basically a VR fishing game. That arrives this September. As for games that don't yet have a release window, we got a new look at gameplay from the zombie title, Days Gone. Players can use the zombies to their advantage, manipulating the environments to make them attack your enemies for you. We also don't know when the robotic drama, Detroit Become Human, arrives. We did get a look at the new playable character played by Grey's Anatomy actor Jesse Williams, so the sooner we get to play it, the better. There is one new game coming to the PS4 this year, and you can actually start playing it right now. The crossover fighting game Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite hits the PS4 and other platforms on September 19th. Sony announced a surprise playable demo that's available right now on the PlayStation Network. You know we'll be streaming that when we get back home. Finally, the new PS4 game that has me the most excited is the new Spider-Man game from Insomniac Games. Sony ended their press conference with a lengthy gameplay trailer showing off the Arkham-esque stealth, environmental takedowns, and close quarters combat. Guess when that arrives? Yep, 2018. All told, the games from Sony's press conference were pretty cool, but there just aren't enough of them coming this year. <laughs> And the most heartwarming presentation here at E3 2017 has to go to Ubisoft. The gaming giant held their press conference on Monday afternoon where they announced a slew of cool titles and played up the importance of the people who make them. The biggest is easily Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, a turn-based combat adventure that will see Nintendo's Mario and Ubisoft's Rabbids join forces for the first time to save the Mushroom Kingdom. Details on the game leaked a few weeks ago, but now we know for sure that it's on the way. It hits the Switch on August 29th. The next biggest Ubisoft announcement is probably Beyond Good and Evil 2, which they've been teasing for years and have finally officially unveiled. It's a prequel set before the events of the 2003 game, but unfortunately we haven't been given a release window, so we might have to keep waiting for a while. Another game that was already announced but shown off for the first time is The Crew 2, a sequel to Ubisoft's 2014 racing game. That crosses the finish line in early 2018. We also got new looks at Assassin's Creed Origins, which jumps down October 27th, and Far Cry 5, which doesn't arrive until February 27th. The long-awaited South Park game, The Fractured But Whole, finally has a release date, October 17th. And Ubisoft announced a South Park mobile game called Phone Destroyer, which will arrive around the same time. Loads of other new games were announced at Ubisoft's press conference. Starlink Battle for Atlas is a new IP that marks Ubisoft's entrance into the Toys to Life genre. Users can assemble and build their own spaceship using real-life toys and then use the same craft in the game. That takes off in fall 2018. It seems like a risky move given the failure of other Toys to Life games like Disney Infinity. Another original game is Transference, a psychological thriller from developer Spectrovision, which is a studio co-founded by Elijah Wood. We're not sure what to make of this one, but it looks pretty interesting. It arrives in the spooky spring 2018 season. If you love the ship combat in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Ubisoft has something very similar in the new New game Skull and Bones. It's not part of the Assassin's Creed universe, but looks very similar to Black Flag ship combat with rival teams of pirates fighting in naval combat on the high seas. That sets sail in fall 2018. VR junkies are getting a new game called Space Junkies, an online multiplayer arcade shooter developed for the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. It takes off in spring 2018. Finally, Ubisoft is bringing new content to their extreme winter sports game, Steep, just in time for the Olympics. The game is getting the new Road to the Olympics expansion, which will arrive December 5th, just before the real-life Winter Olympics kick off in Pyeongchang, South Korea. Steep is also getting a second new batch of DLC called the Extreme Pack, giving players new challenges on June 27th. The thing that set Ubisoft's press conference apart from the others is the fact that they made a good point of showing as many members of their game development teams as possible, showing the love that they all have for each other. It might be the best conference of E3 and the best one that Ubisoft has ever done. Thank you. That wraps us up for the rundown today, but we are just getting started here at E3. Remember, if you want to learn more about game design, visit our friends at vfs.edu. We're going to have a lot more stuff from E3, so keep it locked right here, and we'll see you tomorrow.